Good afternoon. I'm testing the sound, can everybody hear? Okay, yeah, great, thank you. Um, uh, just a few uh, uh, details. Um, uh, if it turns out that it seems that we are losing bandwidth, uh, we would really appreciate it then if you would turn off um, the, uh, the, the video. Um, and also, if, please, at all time for the audience to keep the, the microphone muted. Uh, so that's, you know, the basic uh, part of uh, doing these Zoom presentations. Um, I welcome you all uh, here this afternoon for this um, uh, occasion uh, at the public examination. We are here gathered to uh, have the public examination of uh, Master of Arts Massimo Menicinelli uh, for his uh, doctoral dissertation, uh, Open and Collaborative Design Process, Meta Design, Ontologies and Platforms Within the Maker Movement. As the opponent, uh, we have Professor Elisa Jacardi from Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. Uh, as the custos appointed by the doctoral program committee of Alto University School of Arts, Design and Architecture, I declare the proceedings open. Honored custos, honored opponent, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being here for the defense of my doctoral research on supporting open and collaborative design processes in the making movement and through meta design. So the research is on, on the design culture of meta design, about how designers can design their own processes, environment, media in a self-aware and self-transformative way, while also acting as um, supporting the creativity of other agents. And the focus on is research and practice on meta design, especially on digital platforms for supporting open, distributed and collaborative design making process within the making movement. Overall, it's a overview and reminder that if made true that making is increasingly done through bits and atoms, the infrastructure that um, making require are very important. These are this layer that you see in some 3D printing objects that then are removed, are less seen, but they're very important because they are the foundation element for supporting creativity. And this has been especially the exploration of my role of profile as meta design. So with a tangible metaphor as predefining myself as meta design through research and practice uh, with these foundational layers. So the context and motivation of this research can be found in several phenomena. The one that I would like to stress more uh, is how open source and peer-to-peer became a very important phenomena um, expanding from just software development or software application from something very technical uh, to the possibility of organizing collaborative uh, processes in network that can scale to tens or hundreds of thousands of participants. Um, these are phenomena over the last 15, 20 years, especially that have been increasingly focused on how mass collaboration can increase the opportunity for creating uh, promising initiatives, uh, working on organizational networks that are not traditionally centralized, they can be more centralized, decentralized or diffuse when they're starting, but in any case, they have based on the idea that resources and information and activities are distributed equally potentially to all the agents, wherever they are. And one example of how this open source P2P and DD systems, I call them, is the, is the making movement. This is a great example on how the application of open source and design as open design has been adopted not just as a model, a hypothetical way of working, but as a practice. So Maker as practitioners. And Maker is a global community of distributed individuals that work together, share together in these systems and with the same application and with the same digital technologies. As you normally say, makers are almost everywhere, and especially they are in networks or uh, local laboratories like Fabulous and Maker Spaces, Maker Fairs, so events as well. Uh, but they also have global networks and with uh, projects that can be both local and global. Uh, overall, we have distributed places, tools, and processes, and the cross cutting uh, layer that connects all of these are digital platforms. Uh, and that's why the focus on this dissertation is how to connect and make collaboration possible among distributed agents with platforms. 
and being the Mekemunt an example, one concrete example of how ICT technologies have evolved and can be adopted uh, in organizational uh, efforts, they also experienced the same path of the Internet World Wide Web of the last 15, 20 years. Going from the digital idea that of mass collaboration towards an understanding that actually platforms are moving towards surveillance capitalism, from an idea of the, these digital communities as an open frontier to through all the gardens, and the idea that, well, collaboration is naturally emerging through these technologies through the fact that we, we are aware that there are never ending conflicts. So from one single initiative to multiple process and communities, um, this image is analyzed it on Twitter some years ago to show while actually the community of these labs, like Fablas, Maker Spaces, I guess they're not one single community, but it's already polarized with different um, type uh, of communities and way they are structured and more diverse or more lately identified. So more are the more nuances and richness to how this is unfolding. And in this I've identified four gaps. Uh, there is a gap in both research and practice in supporting makers collaborative practice in project documentation organization. Research is normally done on the makers and making movement, but very rarely for and through them. So it's just trying to understand what's happening with a phenomenon that is still evolving. Um, meta design is uh, rather adopted in the movement, but there is not awareness of that and what does it imply and what is the implication on this. Uh, and overall, what the, uh, are the changes that are definition of these open P2P DDD systems uh, introduced to design? And this also takes place in the evolution in of special of awareness in terms of goals from designer or makers to meta designer, going from how do we design collaboratively to how do we support collaborative design processes. Um, this is important because also the focus on the dissertation and the research has been not on developing efficient and usable tools, so it's not about UX user interface interaction design, but developing things that are about supporting the process through the tools, so it's meta design. So. Basically, the work has been on how meta design as an approach is uh, adopted in the making movement to uh, make open design possible with the role of meta designer. So, what are the practice and role and profile making this possible, connecting this dimension? Um, then I say this is a, an evolving meta design practice in an emerging phenomenon. So, very uh, uh, unstable and fluid phenomenon way of working. So this has been not an in-depth reflection upon an established practice, uh, an ex post analysis, uh, but in the media race analysis of the uh, all the experiences, skills, and activities that concur in defining this, uh, starting from how, for example, design making, software development, social analysis can be connected with data in supporting collaborative processes. And this is also for a separate examination of role of practice uh, of myself as a meta designer in facilitating these distributed processes, starting as designer, researcher, student, facilitator, and participant of the movement and developing this further into the research. The methodology adopted is uh, design as a method for inquiry. So design not just as a practice, but also as a tradition of research, um, which is, a uh, tradition of its own, separate from science of art, um, because it goes from the universal to the particular, trying to understand the real, create a real idea with the serving approach, uh, serving of others approach. So also the starting point in terms of hypothesis here, I rather call it as a design hypothesis, because it's about uh, elaborating a proposition or supposition about the relevance of uh, the artificial nature of a design intervention towards creating the ideal in the real while being grounded in the real, in the real and true. So the design hypothesis behind these researches be that makers can be facilitated in collaborating, organizing, coordinating their work. This facilitation can be supported with the design of the digital languages and maps. And these are a kind of new media design that defines collaborative processes with the ontology of a data format as a shared language with related platforms. The main research questions is this, how can we support and integrate the research and practice of meta designers in analyzing, designing, and sharing open and collaborative design making processes with these open peer to peer systems? And this has been unfolded more productively in four sub research questions. Uh, the first one, more on the design dimension how can collaborative design processes be designed, documented, and shared? In terms of analysis, how can we, we understand, analyze, and share this 
um, processes and in platforms, and how we can connect practice and research together in the world of maker designers. And overall, you know, what is the overall context of this methods and practice and research taking place into these open peer-to-peer -peer DDD systems? And uh, the approach adopted is a research through design, uh, again, because it's a, about something that has been an experience in supporting makers, not something that is established and uh, finalized, but something that is a process. So it's more an exploratory and generative approach um, and based on emerging established practice. And the important thing is that the artifact is an important uh, aspect in this, but for creating knowledge, not by itself. So it's more a practice-based uh, research. And so this practice and these uh, artifacts, they um, are inserted into uh, iterative cycles of hypothesis making and hypothesis experimenting uh, that are basically on experimenting more with this towards the relevance of the results in generating knowledge uh, and a relevance that is linked to the motivation uh, of the researchers and practitioners. Um, and it's important because all the actions taking place in these, they take place in a continuum between a particular what the design is, so for example, a product to universal, what designing is for paradigm. So we have projects, program, and, and the practice in it that enable us to move from research to practice with several steps. The knowledge uh, elaborated in uh, these cycles and uh, by moving from research to practice, enable us to uh, create design theories of, of a phenomenon, basically, uh, and this, creating an explanation of how design is defining activities and artifacts through the practice. So these iterative cycles have been through uh, three main phases. In the first phase, uh, the work was on developing a set of design guidelines concept for supporting community in developing open and peer-to-peer -peer organizational forms with open and peer-to-peer -peer, uh, collaborative design processes. More how to inspire and so just how to collaborate and work in that and understand these processes. Um, the limitation of the steel to uh, wide and abstract guidelines led to in phase two development of paper-based toolkits, can be for sketching and discussing processes and together trying to understand how to create uh, with a more structured way design process, collaborative design processes. However, paper-based toolkits are very good for um, work in the same place with the same few agents. So the next step, phase three, was to develop a, a digital platform for supporting and connecting distributed actors. But this is based on an overall framework that for research and practice, research design and the, and the platform. Uh, so with an ontology uh, defining design process that then it connects with data, software, and design that you know, create the platform that enable the design and discussion of such processes. And ontology here is at the center and it has several uh, important dimensions. So on one side, we are working designing ontology, so as data structure, so it's the design material, we design them. This is ontology seen as data in computer science. But we are also working with ontological design, so we are basically uh, realizing that we are working with an impact on human uh, condition, woman being, with worldviews that are social and in terms of the designers. And the work has been on connecting both the social and the dimension by creating ontology design processes. So this was developed then as a platform called Open Design. This is a real-time platform where uh, the, a project can be discussed and all this process and collaboration in this discussion can be seen. Uh, and then processes are uh, modeled and designed as activities that uh, flow through time uh, with different level of participation, with different places between the inside and outside of a community and flows of information resources between them. Then each element of uh, this platform or the process can be edited and also discussed in real time, enable uh, users to discuss what is it. Seven articles uh, were developed, including a dissertation. The first three, they analyze existing practice and existing overall context. The uh, second three, they developed the open design framework in terms of analyzing the design, data, meta design aspects. And finally, the last one documented the research study where um, the open meta design platform were tested and elaboration of instance and research design strategy. So three phases up and through the years with articles mostly part of the last phase. And this also in reflection of all the, these changes through time in both of 
work places and, and uh, professions. Four uh, research methods were adopted, literary review for state of the art, design and development of platform, user testing, and social network analysis of the networks of interactions. Four contributions were developed. The first one is a research design framework that is foundational to all the other contribution because it, uh, it puts all of them together. Uh, and it's not just a description of what's happened, but it's also a research strategy, a research practice, an education strategy for the future. So basically, now we have the platform as a product, uh, the dissertation, the doctoral research as a project, the framework as a program, the pra my practice, and the paradigm of open design, peer-to-peer -peer design. So this enables to understand where research and practice are and how they can be done uh, in this context. This also expands the idea that research design can be done on the lab, the showroom, and the field by adding the maker laboratory, the community, and the platform as settings for research design. Then we, the next contribution basically said that what meta design does in this context, designing processes with digital ontology to design material. So again, starting with the open design framework to create a platform for designing processes. And this impact the life cycle of a project, you know, from designing processes that then generate networks of interactions. These networks create an organization and then a governance in terms for managing the organization and, and the processes. And lastly, our community mediate basically between the life cycle of projects, the platform and the crop sets, mediating also between local and global and with the worldview. The third contribution say redefine meta design within the context of the maker movement. So meta design work uh, here with open P2P PTC systems by creating open projects that can be used in open projects, but also by creating fully fledged uh, meta design approaches that are work more on the organizational aspects of these processes. And one important thing that some of these are made of uh, bits and some of bits of atoms. So this brings back the importance for physical aspects of uh, artifacts. Finally, we are working with ontologies, with ontological design and on design ontology. And here meta goes on a meta design approach, but also working on metadata and open source. So this can be further extended. Last contribution basically see that we are defining the role and profile of meta designers within the maker movement. So which are the skills and professions? So uh, from the initial profile that identified myself, now we know that I have uh, basically five roles, designer, facilitator, participant, developer, researchers, and with each of the three, uh, a skill that's important for this, at least what was developed and learned through the years for making all this uh, research and practice. And all of these, of course, if it's model, then can also um, when assign on a score to each of these, it's possible to adopt this, what is a meta design profile index as a way for self-assessing, self-reporting, the skills adopted by meta design, but also what is necessary, for example, for developing a project, meaning where there is a strength of meta designers and where other meta designers can help and contribute to. Furthermore, an important, very important thing is that this work of the meta design is part of a social network uh, that the meta designer works with and for, but influence in a reciprocal way. So finding where is the role uh, in the designer, meta designer here, but understanding where is the position in the social networks and where are the expectations in terms of interactions and behavior from such position. So in terms of conclusions, overall, what was developed was a framework for redefining meta design by studying how design can integrate data and social dimension in supporting distributed agency and collaborative processes. And this by redefining ontology and meta design as the act of collaborative design processes, meta design as the approach behind this activity, and meta design meaning the role and profile of who works uh, in this. And this enables us to have a transition and theory of meta design and make a movement, which is situated, is temporary. And for this context, it's basically say that meta design is practicing research with and for open peer to peer DDD systems, the place in maker spaces, communities, and platforms with the designs of bits and atoms artifacts, uh, such support distributed collaborative processes. And this is done through the development of metadata ontology for ontological design uh, with multi-personary, multi-professional practice of meta designer in, in social networks. Um, one important contribution that it does to the design discipline is that since we have broadly speaking, we move from uh, simulate what can be the needs of designer or of user to engage them in uh, 
uh, in, in the pro design process, trying to understand the experience. Here, we are focusing more and more to the worldviews, trying to make them explicit, understand how these influence projects. And this is done through uh, highlighting our ontology as about data and social dimensions. And this ultimately can basically contribute on how we design uh, distributed systems. It's also a reflection on the conventional digital universalisms of many ACT initiatives, but especially make a movement like that there is one single global community and platform for everybody. Um, trying to understand, address this conflict, thinking that more than designing one single global community, that instead that always have one local ontology push to every localities, to instead create platforms that are, are based on networks of local ontologies that collaborate together. Uh, and this overall, um, basically, so, so hopefully will contribute to uh, design practice research, adding another layer to what the making movement has been doing. Making movement can be considered both formally and informally a new way for doing design. Uh, and especially it had added the work with software and hardware, not just by adopting them, but developing them. And this is now increasingly more popular. Uh, and what I hope open design and my dissertation will do to try to popularize more that we can actually can design with ontologies, uh, we design ontologies and within them. And this is not just for professional uh, application and professional uh, work like an industrial made Arduino, but also for all the work done at the AOL level, at grassroots level. So with the democratization of working uh, with other software and then ontologies with all the communities and local network and connect them globally. Uh, I ask you, honored opponent, appointed by the doctoral program committee of the School of Arts and Architecture, to present the critical comments on the dissertation that you find well funded. Yes, <laughs> thank you. I apologize, I wasn't being able to unmute. I'm going now to share my screen. Um, but it seems like, yes, I need to wait. And yes. Uh, can you see it? Can you see it well? Yes? Okay, super. Um, dear respondent or dear Massimo, I have read the thesis and I would like to introduce my line of questioning with a brief reading of the work. To understand this work has been important for me, and I believe it's really important to position it as a research journey rooted in practice, and specifically within the shared projects, events, and discussions of the maker movement, as you nicely introduced. Now, while we might easily expect to find an image of the Arduino kit that you just showed in your last slide, or perhaps other kinds of electronics kits and 3D printed artifacts and the like. The figure here illustrates well how the maker movement is approached in the thesis. And that is as a fundamental framing of the maker movement as a case for understanding and supporting diffuse, distributed and decentralized design processes. 
In my reading, the main underlying questions are two. The first one is how do we position the act of making in relation to diffuse, distributed and decentralized design processes? And the second question is how do we then approach such design processes as a design material? The answer, looking at diffuse, distributed and decentralized processes ontologically as software and reconsidering also what software is from an ontological perspective. Based on such conceptual framing, methodologically expanding the notion of meta design and the role of meta designers within the maker movement. The two went hand in hand over a research journey of 15 exciting years of active participation and reflection in and upon action within the movement itself. The final proposition, or perhaps more correctly, the transitional design theory, as you like to call it, for on, on, uh, following on Johann Restrum, that is offered by the thesis is open meta design. This is both a conceptual framework in which meta designers are considered fundamentally as participants in social networks, enabled to act according to the fluid spectrum of roles from designers to developers to researchers or simply facilitators, and a digital platform for collaboratively designing and manufacturing digital and physical artifacts as open design projects. Key to open meta design is the development of a metadata ontology, a vocabulary and classification system meant to describe the necessary conditions for collaborative activities to emerge across diffuse, distributed and decentralized systems. And thus for sustaining agency in those contexts. So concretely, what we're looking at is a digital platform consisting of an online environment and a data format that allow users to collaboratively design both the governance of participation in the design processes and the organization of the actual flows for the design and manufacturing of digital and physical artifacts. Based on this reading and my own expertise, the line of questioning will focus primarily on teasing out and discussing some tensions that I have identified in the work. The first one will concerns the claimed positioning of the thesis in the context of a digital transformation of society and a discussion on whether and how digital ontologies can serve as well. The second tension concerns a discussion who is the meta designer in the post-industrial, post-human age and the potential risks of equating making and participation when it comes to non-human agents. The third is provocatively about whether we are looking at a research through design journey or actually a research and design journey. And finally, I'd like to also discuss issues of experimentation and impact evaluation of the work.
uh, I will reply to these uh, four points then. And the first issue of digitaliz digitalization versus extraction. Yes. Nothing, uh, perhaps. Sorry if I interrupt. Um, I have specific questions for each oh, okay. of them. Perfect. So that probably will make it easier because altogether it's quite a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So um, I'd like to start our discussion talking about uh, the tensions between um, what you identify as on one side more eyeballs for better solutions and on the other side more eyeballs for more surveillance which is really a nice interesting framing so there is a deep motivation in the work that i really appreciate looking to an extent also to the dark side of social movements which i think has never been more appropriate and a very nuanced consideration of their social, economic, and political infrastructuring, and the need for mediation and negotiation beyond what we actually make. And uh, you do say, indeed, designers that work with platforms are caught in this tension between idealized open participatory systems and the opaqueness of value extraction that we are increasingly seeing coming out of um, the platform capitalism has been enabled by uh, the, the type of technologies um, that, that we were dealing with with this work. And, and so this, this tension between digitalization on one side and value extraction on the other side, between collaboration and conflict. Um, at page 14, you say designing platforms should then consider how supporting a high number of participants can enable collaboration and not conflicts and surveillance. And so this all brings it back to the digital ontology at the end, because you say there's a need to shift in the end. Ultimately, what it means is that we need to shift from being affected by a digital ontology, by the algorithms and data structures of present technology to designing digital ontologies. And the maker movement is a case of this. Uh, one of your two contributions emerging from this positioning are identified in the work um, as a redefinition of the role of the meta designer. And what I'm interested in here uh, in article three, how specifically social network analysis can be used by meta designers to understand the social dynamics of the collaborative processes they support and their role in them. At page 94, you say, by analyzing their position and centrality in the social networks of interactions, meta designers can then extract and analyze metadata of social interactions and use them to define the social boundaries for the definition of digital ontologies of specific communities. And clearly here you're referring not just to data formats, but clearly also to worldviews. And so I, the claim you make at page 28 is that your dissertation should enable meta designers to design or adapt existing platforms in a critical way. Because as we've mentioned before, it's important to move from accepting platforms as given environments to co-designing them with all the engaged and affected actors. So after this really long introduction to the question, I'd like to perhaps um, in having us engage in a little exercise, a little bit playful to make it concrete. So if you were to pick a platform, Etsy maybe, uh, even Google Classroom, how would you apply social network analysis and define a digital ontology for redesigning it based on your work? Um, Etsy is a good example in this, not just because it's been one of the main platform for supporting in the commercial aspect of the making movement, but also because it went itself through a big uh, change some years ago. 
uh, as is sometimes happen. Uh, for example, it's been helpful. The CEO was changing with another one that had a more industrial view of enabling industrial approach and not more crafts. Um, and this changed a bit the, the approach to the platform itself. So this is a change of worldview, not just of um, people, but really like, what are we going to do with the platform from being completely crafted and distributed to the more supporting uh, this, uh, industrial processes connected to craft? And it has been not the only maker platform going through uh, this change. And there is one important thing of platforms um, that it has a very uh, huge difference with traditional software. This is a challenge for open source software and free software before, because I've always been saying, you know, once the source code is accessible, we can understand it and check what is working, what is not, where the freedom or where there are other constraints to use us. But this is true that we can change things in a desktop software because we download it and compile, but not on the platform because we don't have access to what's taking place on, on the server. We might have access to some portion of the data through the APIs, but not to the full database, or not to the full ontology, and not to the algorithms that are managing the data. So and then adapting an existing platform is particularly uh, tricky, meaning that it has to go through a very uh, relevant uh, governance process with who's managing the platform, opening certain aspects, and not just the source software. Um, designing a new platform uh, might be easier in terms of adopting the worldviews. It has the difficulty, of course, of creating the world infrastructure and the multi-site market, so having all the uh, different kind of users and activities in place. And uh, it's not just in terms of scale, of quantity, but also of uh, richness. And there's also the difference between having a, a prototype and a fully implemented uh, thing. Um, the term, in terms of social network analysis on first level could be, for example, in Etsy to understand the interactions between the different user using the, um, the platform. Could be the makers using it for selling their projects to understand, is there any collaboration and there everybody is doing their things on their own? Because this is also another important thing of uh, mass collaboration, open source, peer-to-peer -peer DD systems is that we always tend to look for mass collaboration to a very high number of participants. But for example, in some analysis of GitHub, we know that very few projects are uh, used to mention as a participant. Most of the projects are very small one and they tend to die very quickly because of course there is not enough uh, momentum and community support in that. So that's important to try to understand how we can connect and support the, the participants of these systems. Uh, and this, if you want to know the usage of the platform, another level is who works on designing the platform or maintaining the platform, you know, the terms of social network analysis of that. Um, this is also an analysis that I did in Article 3 and continue working on, on a platform that I managed for a couple of years um, because you understand also what uh, the work, uh, the, what is the team that is working on that? Who's more crucial? Who can leverage part of the, uh, the project itself, but also the community and manage the participation itself? Uh, a project with three people writing code or 100 or more work makes a big change. Uh, and this is something that we start to do. And this reminds me that even very successful projects like Linux, they had their own issues in terms of governance, of leadership and managing participation. So it's not that this is the perfect solution as probably 15, 20 years ago or more, it was promoted, uh, but it's a very good uh, way for making things transparent and give awareness of that. So one of the key issues that we have the platform, there is sometimes a lack of awareness of uh, people using that, but also designers. And this is why, for example, the meta design approach, one of the main reasons this is very interesting and why we should also start to have awareness of our own worldview in what we design. Um, and the same is for the ontology they designed for open meta design is a big reflection of my worldview. So elements of this come from service design, from activity theory and interaction design. So my own background. And this, for example, works well when you test it with designers or people that have background design and understand these concepts, but in other culture, does this happen? or with people with less experience in service design might be a bit more difficult to, to understand that. So this is one an important thing to also have awareness of what is happening and the worldview role in this. 
Yes, there's something really interesting in the way in which you look at the, the, the use of social network analysis in, in terms of creating, to an extent, more transparency, as you said, but also, and I think you mentioned it at page 102, um, really uh, looking at the, the plurality of worldviews of all of the different communities that are involved um, in a particular design process. And then um, it was around that uh, part of the, of, of, of the work that um, you mentioned the importance of the valorization of local diversities as opposed to a universal community. Um, and, and you briefly mention um, AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, seem to suggest that uh, the, the possibility of adapting the system through people to people's usages and communities, local dynamics through um, machine learning, um, artificial in intelligence more, more in general, might be something interesting. And so I have a question here about what are the expectations, your expectations for the role that artificial intelligence can play in this pluralistic worldview, because of what we're actually saying is it's pretty much the reverse, right? Um, can, can really help out for cosmo cosmopolitan localism? So that one big tension is also between how many ontology we should have. Like one yes. single ontology, everybody, we know that it's having some you know, problems. Um, but we don't want to get to the point where we have an ontology per each person, otherwise it will be completely impossible to discuss. So for example, um, finding the communities with the, their own boundaries with social network analysis is a good way for finding, you know, until which one worldview is valid and then where we have another worldview, more or less. This is also, you know, the paradox of frontiers between countries, regions, whatever but it might be good for understanding that. And this is also important because when you identify these communities, you're never one person, one, also in my case, you are never only part of one community. So for example, I can identify the percentages of communities making my own profile in the maker movement and understand the diversity in this. Um, so the reason why I introduce uh, hinting a bit of machine learning, because, uh, well, right now, open design, the algorithms are quite simple. Most of the work is translating the data format to a visualization and editing that and back forward. Um, the net social network analysis is done separately and everything is open source, so it's transparent, but there is not so much in terms of a very complex or black box analysis that we will have in many machine learning. Uh, but this might be added. But there might be also one important thing. If we want to find a middle point between one ontologies and 7 billion of ontologies, uh, we need to find some common elements. And uh, I identified some um, in open meta design with the ontology that I created and also added in the dissertation for uh, this example, for this reason. Um, but then there are other places where we can work on bridging the different worldviews. And one, for example, could be in the visualization. Uh, one aspect, for example, they investigated with the user test in the platform was uh, their metaphor of a process. And, and for example, roughly speaking, some, for some of them, it was a more organic, like a flow of a river. So from other for was more mechanicist like gears. Um, it's a very different way of seeing things. Um, or we design two completely different platforms with different ontologies, or is the same platform with an ontology that then can be visualized and edited in a different way for them, like a translator between different languages, uh, but enable them to work on the same thing, even if it's some translation in the middle. And this translation, of course, is where algorithms are more important, not just in visualization, but how to handle data. And I think it's important to start asking ourselves, what is the role of algorithms in this? Mm -hmm. um, because the more the time goes by, the more they can be implemented and this you know, can grow and get a bit not out of control, but start to conquer other parts and then becoming more black box. And there could be a less awareness of those. Uh, and considering that they also are 
actant or agents, if you want here, no human one. So it's important because they have a role in what we are doing. And themselves in one way or another, they embed a worldview. Um, mine or the other developers. So it's very important to make this uh, explicit and understand that can still have a role in connecting um, different actors in different places, but we need to understand what is this connection that is happening. So opening up the connection as well a little to understand how is it made. Yep. Yeah. And I, I saw this, for example, one of the first workshops that I did uh, where the participants, they when they started visualizing the process of the open design projects, they realized what they were doing, where more power or uh, financial resources were being you know, stored and who were more relevant to add an influence and they were able to say, no, we should change the governance of this. And then this, if it works on a simple uh, settings as a workshop, this is prosing in a way that, you know, we can actually at least have a discussion based on an infrastructure on something that's concrete and we can understand how it works more than the black box. This is a nice lead to uh, perhaps discussing uh, issues of making a participation when it comes to an age where we have actants are not just um, human, but also non-human. And of course, already the non-human is present in your work. You know, the infrastructures in a way do have expressed some sort of agentive role. Um, but at page 31, and you explicitly mentioned a new perspective of agency and the participants in design projects also redefine how we design and whom we design with and for. And later at page 112, you open up uh, Manzini's um, argument that, not, that everyone could be a designer, adding that everyone could actually be a meta designer or at least an active actor in the meta design ecosystem. And that's where you uh, expand um, notions of agency towards the post-human, saying that non-human actors, like for example, artificial intelligence, can concur to the development and management of the meta-design ecosystem, and therefore can be considered non-human meta-designers as well. And here, I'm trying to, to tease out, because I find myself very much aligned with that argument, but I'm trying to problematize in a bit what, what is it that we're looking at here, um, particularly from the perspective of the open meta design framework, where um, an activity theory approach is being used, um, not just for design of mediating tools, and objects, but also increasingly to define subjects, roles, and divisions of labor, and therefore enabling conditions for collaborative and distributed processes. And so when we look at that very intimate link between the, the activity, the making, and the definition of the subject, I wonder how this expansion of the agential role therefore participation, um, sits with the idea of the meta designer that's elsewhere uh, quite engaged in the, in, in the work. The meta designer is a reflective practitioner um, whose profile and also the role um, is not just determined by what he or she does, uh, makes, but also as a consequence of practice as someone that makes, participates, but also reflects in and upon action through practice. So I guess what I'm trying to ask here is, can, can we attempt at a reflection to see how your you know, theoretical and methodological approach holds up when we really look at what these non-human agents are and whether they actually can be meta designers in the sense of a reflective practitioner? One uh, starting point for addressing this is the way also I'm trying to see design processes is not with uh, just an input output 
and black box. There is something right. that takes place, but more as a network of uh, actors interacting at different level in different ways. Uh, and when it becomes a network, of course, uh, even a tiny uh, activity in a tiny contribution is part of the design uh, process. You know, so. Um, now we can have, for example, we design few algorithms that in any case, you know, intervene in, in the processes. Uh, when you use the platform, of course, uh, the algorithms are not just, you know, doing the visualization, but they're ending the data. So in any case, they already have a, a role in that. Um, and at least I know that many makers are working with the Internet of Things in different levels, but for example, a lot of experimentation is done in automatizing uh, processes in the makerspace. You know, adding IoT to 3D printers, lots of cutting and try to control them. Uh, one good example, I think they documented in article uh, five, in when we say how the maker movement, uh, how makers the maker movement document design processes that there are um, online platforms like Shapeways that enable 3D printing, they are opening their processes with API. So you can create um, production processes by writing software code because you are somehow, even if of course it's controlled somehow by them, um, controlling what they're 3D printing. This means that right now, maybe this, the processes are very simple, but I cannot guarantee that out there, some makers will create software that, you know, link open meta design, which shape we send 30 fab labs and the software itself, you know, decide when to print 13 objects or 20 objects or modify the design. Uh, and this is important because when we deal with this kind of open systems, I, um, we need to start preparing uh, what could be happening or at least understanding that, of course, a bit uh, of what's happening on the interface is out of our control. In any case, it's always renegotiated, re readopted, and adding it as open source software even more is, is more out of control. One other aspect that is uh, towards the posthuman in terms of actants in the maker movement, it's still a minority, but it's growing slowly, is the connection with synthetic biology. And uh, this is part of the DUI bio community. There's been more niche, but increasingly more connected. So there are more and more makers that are using this for creating you know, microorganisms that they can produce plastic tracings and other substances. And of course, again, we have to consider them as part of the design and making processes. And why right now, typically they're a very small example. Again, if they start to connect with data, with hardware and software, all of the, I don't know, bacteria culture for producing the plastic with sensors from the environment and connecting with another platforms, then we have production and design and production systems that they are a complex uh, scenario of different kind of uh, agents that work together. Yeah, I mean, um, I I quite agree with um, with this argument, and um, I myself do do believe that um, algorithms and and living organisms um, in these new uh, developments of of, for example, bio design do very much participate in the design process on their own terms. And that we need to look at different ways of understanding our relation with them uh, within the, the the making process. But I but I guess what really sparked my reflection here um, is whether we can not only consider them active participants with their own logics and their own worldviews, um, to which we need to relate somehow um, in, in a different way than a tool, but whether they, these non-human entities have expressed a practice and, and therefore are an entity that is deemed um, that's capable of reflection. So it, it was the, the stretch from the, act, from the active participant all the way to the meta designers, a reflective practitioner that, um, that has that ability of looking back um, to what has been done and, and build on that. That might probably be the 
criteria for defining was designer was meta designer, whatever type of factor is, uh, in terms of awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, today year I've been engaging a lot of discussion, what is meta design and typical, a, a lot of comments are, well, then you have the meta and the meta of the meta and then it never ends. And I will say, yes, of course, this is what happens with systems because yes. even if they make a movement, a lot of make you think that it's about making yourself everything from the chair to the table to the uh, uh, computer and the building. Of course, you, you don't do that. This is too complex. You need too much energy, information, knowledge, and expertise and materials to do that. Uh, so understanding where to put the boundaries of a system is very important. For example, it's one of the first steps when doing social network analysis to understand which depth we want to go and explore the network, for example in a snowball sampling or in an, an ego network at which degree we want to stop and typically it's one or two because then it's too complex and it's too big that we can really handle and it's, it's not it's just creating the system but also seeing the system is too complex and so most of the time it's an issue of being aware uh, that you are a part of a process and the system that you can actually design it it's not that you use what mm -hmm. is given uh, and then these interns change you and bought the condition um then of course the issue of awareness is something that it's a bit more complex especially when algo we talk with algorithms or even with bacteria and so on so it's a uh, it's probably something of course we have to redefine what will be the awareness in uh, computing yeah. information if an algorithm for bacteria um I don't know so much, but yes. I don't know maybe a bacteria is more able to understand it's part of an environment than an algorithm yet. Yeah. We don't, no, I don't know. I, but I think you, yeah, I think you phrased it really, you framed it really nicely, right? So it's just not an issue of participation, but also awareness and how we reframe awareness in this context, perhaps more in terms of responsiveness and, and being able to understand that they're part of a process and how to respond to that. It's quite interesting. Uh, maybe to trouble it a little bit more, I'm not sure if I'm troubling your work and trying to trouble my own positions, but that, that just to say that reading your work has been quite inspiring. Um, um, at page, again, 112, you say, um, the follow up to, to what we were just discussing. Such democratization is of course, not naturally emerging in equal manner as it depends on the qualitative and quantitative amount of participation of an actor in the definition of an ontology and on the requisite necessary for undertaking such activities of a meta designer. As an example, privileges, inequality and minority are still issues to be addressed. And so when, when, when we think of these um, um, non-humans, uh, non-human actants in um, in a design process. What what are could you could you tease out the benefits um, of an activity theoretical approach to tools and processes um, to understand how as actants, they can be brought into the process in ways that um, can actually be equal and just to an extent. Does it serve you well? I'm just trying to see how, you know, how much as you, I can imagine ideally will move this framework forward, right? The, the, the initial theoretical and methodological underpinning helps you here and that you need, as we were saying before, maybe a different way of understanding participation and awareness and so forth. So there is an important element that I think is actually uh, something that we should discuss a lot in the open peer-to-peer -peer DD systems is about what is a peer and what is the peer in the peer-to-peer -peer connection. Because of course we want, what well, is most of us that have been working this movement, we want to have equality between everybody, but one part of the awareness is understanding also the path dependency of systems. No, as in year 2020, you know, what happened before is not that we are going to change everything and it starts from scratch, which mm -hmm. is one of the also issues in uh, the making movement and sometimes to try to recreate a uh, world production system. That's why it's more so complex to do that. Um, meaning that, of course, we, we can talk in different levels, but in any case, even if an open meta design example in the workshop did, 
sometimes uh, or in making you need different skills, different professions uh, that nobody has all, all of them. So it was also my reflection on myself with are the skills that I have. So I know that I can participate more in one part or more and less in others. Uh, and this means that, of course, if we start adding these nuances, the peers are not already at the same level. So mm -hmm. how we judge that or how we consider that differences, it's very important because right now has been mostly said, so we want to all be equal in the same connection. So we tend not to overlook, don't look at the diversity and the differences because otherwise we start having troubles and thinking that, well, it's not so easy to connect everybody. Uh, but it's a very important thing. It's happening, and is this, if you want, is also maybe metaphorically speaking, is the is the physical aspects of digital innovation that, for example, in the first year was overlooked, even in the dot com bubble was overlooked, and that's why also the making movement starts saying, well, let's put this back into consideration. What are the differences here? And I'm saying this because, of course, different kind of factors, they might have different skills than others, and can work in a moment where others cannot. Um, can be skills, can be information. Uh, for example, you know, the Von Ippel works with lead users. There's the issue of the idea of sticky information where it is more concentrated than, okay, this person is more an innovator than another because this person has more knowledge, whether it's a professional or not. Um, so of course I can say for sure there are processes where algorithms are much more relevant than I do. In my in my work as well, in some types of analysis, um, I don't think that they, the algorithm myself in a different way, but we're um, working together. And for example, here one of the things that we uh, we can see of this difference of level of how to handle this diversity, uh, for example, can be addressed with activity theory, because one of the thing activity theory does is not just understand activities in a complex way, but also how they conflict. Um, with themselves and with other activities. So let's see, for example, what are the tensions between my work in research and practice and the social network analysis algorithm that I used, and then, I don't know, other makers with IoT and bacteria and all of that. So there might be tensions. There might be another, maybe more important than activity. One could be one way for understanding which tensions are and understanding whether the tensions are not just for readjusting the activities, just normally how tensions are seen in the theory, you know, for um, making things work well, uh, but also try to understand how are this tension, you know, making a difference between the peers, how they're handling, you know, the the connection between the peers in this sense. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, I'd like to move um, to a more methodological discussion. Um, and look at the transitions in between um, research and practice and the tensions. Uh, you do an excellent job in your thesis in, um, in contextualizing the work within um, the emerging, so to speak, area of research or design, which is also quite fluid in terms of definitions still. Um, so it's really nice treatment in the methodological section. Um, at page one of four, you say, in the research and design process of this dissertation, the artifact started as a conceptual methodology and then became a platform and ultimately ended as a reflection on ontologies of both the digital technologies and cultural use. You also explain this in your, um, um, in your slides at the beginning. Um, so retrospectively, the ontology really becomes the main artifact of the research and design effort of this work um, and also the foundation for uh, much practice and research. And this is reflected, as you say, at page 56 in the practice dimension by your interest and how it shifted increasingly from teaching digital fabrication technologies, making processes, and open and collaborative design processes to instead facilitating them, uh, participating and directing organizations and later managing the development of digital platforms that support them. Um, so the research hypothesis as a result of that, the questions, the methods and the activities 
really have reflected this shifting of perspectives that emerge through practice. And where, as you say, page 56, subsequently updated, rearranged, and reorganized several times. And it's quite, though, although it's quite common in a research design that there is a, a significant um, element of retrospection to make sense of what has happened. Um, at page 61, following Zimmerman and Forlizzi, you argue that your doctoral research has followed a philo philo philosophical approach. Um, so an approach that where the research question is formulated out of an existing theory um, or philosophy and then investigated with an artifact rather than being um, a more grounded approach rather than focusing on one specific context, meaning um, one approach where the research question instead emerges from the focus on real world problems and the artifacts designed towards them. And so I, I'd like to argue that your practice was actually quite grounded in, of course, and your research was indeed quite philosophical and that somehow they proceeded quote unquote separately according to what restaurant would identify as a parallel or at best sequencing tactic. How would you respond to this provocation? Um, the, let's see where to start from. So the, <laughs> the anthology is, uh, is one of the main artifacts, but this is something also that emerged through time especially with awareness. So like we know that we need the data structures that are the core of any new media design, you know, basically any new media artifact is a database with, with an interface. Um, but it is a big step from saying, okay, we need to design a data structure to the data structures connected to the worldview with the people working on it. So this uh, starts processes of governance, discussion, conflicts about that. Um, one of the main things that was very important also in terms of my, way of working the research through the years was how well can we do research through these years where this practice is changing a lot. The maker monk itself has changed a lot. All the communities have been there being new communities starting, dying, new ones. So it's been very, very uh, fluid. So it was very difficult to test something that in a normal conventional practice is okay, we design an artifact and we see how much it supports something existing. So how much it is efficient or how much is understood um, that's why I said it's more interesting to understand the relevance um, in terms of the design hypothesis, that's why I thought, let's call it design hypothesis in terms of relevance. What, what is really relevant here for this context more than if it's validated something of, if it's proof that it, uh, there is something that uh, reached some uh, practical aims. Um, and this parallel processes, you know, the, they've been through and then uh, in the end, adopting restaurant framework for having, you know, this spectrum between research and the practice uh, was also very useful for uh, making sense of what happened, but also the creating this as a strategy for the future. Uh, it's a bit the work I've been doing in the theory three. I'm not using it just as a, a method, but itself as a design material. So the activity system can be used. If you can use it for analyzing and visualizing something, then you can use it as a design material. Um, so that's why I say that this is typically not just exploratory, but also generative research. Uh, meaning that it wasn't like, okay, well, let's start, when I start what is the make wounds right now, which is already well established, then we do research here. Now it's like, okay, we use all this year to understand how we can do research practice and education from now on in a very systematic way, uh, which is a very different way from how I saw it was done before. So th that's why, so this is very interesting for me too, that it was helpful so for, yeah. Yeah, for building this, all this through this project. So that's why the through is important here. Yes, yes, yes. No, I can see that. I just wanted to, to see what you would have re responded. I, I think there is a very interesting, really powerful tension in your work between a practice that is extremely grounded and a research that's very, um, um, quite high level in terms of, you know, considering 
theories and philosophies and how those relate, apply to, to what have what you've been doing and what you might be doing. And so um, the, the through is not always so apparent, uh, you know, in a particular in, in instance, in a particular form of, of you know, intermediary, um, intermediate uh, knowledge, but it's clearly in the process and it's in this continuous feeding into each other uh, throughout, the, the, uh, throughout the years. So yes, I'm pleased with the answer. <laughs> um, I think we're moving towards the, 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 the last part of the discussion um, where I would like to um, perhaps look into how you've done things in terms of experimentation, particularly with, with, with the communities and the results and the impact of those results. Um, at page 106, you write, the open meta design ontology was at first developed with established approaches and tools, such as you mentioned, did activity theory and service design, but workshops and research studies proved how these are still far from being always understood and accepted everywhere, and pointed out how local worldviews should be rather addressed when designing digital ontologies, platforms, and visualizations. So I have a question, whether you could tell me something on the different roles of um, the user sessions and workshops and their important in your, importance in your research. So I'm looking for a little bit more of a personal reflection. I know that they played a different role, you know, more exploratory at the beginning and then more kind of a testing. Um, um, type of work at the end, but on a personal level, you know, how, how there was the practice, there's the thinking, and then there are the people you worked with and the workshops and all of these sessions, how important they had been. Well, first thing also that beside an open meta design, they also try to adopt the method as an approach also in other work that I've been doing. For example, and when I used to work as consultant for developing Fab Labs, I developed them as with service design and activity with the same tools that I use this, of course, in a slightly different way. And I would say, yes, we can say it's my design because in any case, these are places for them, people to design and work in them. So there was also this connection with a bit of practice, uh, but with open methods and we're more in depth reflection on this. Um, there have been basically testing in each of the three phases. Uh, in the first one, there was uh, especially three workshops, one in Seoul and Singapore, one in Seoul, one in Singapore, and one in, uh, in Helsinki. And they were documented in uh, article two. And it was very useful to understand, so see the difference in adopting, but also in the terms of tools and using the first one in subversion, then Git, so tools for software development for managing collaboration in software development. Uh, and for example, the, um, the reason why they yeah, develop a real-time platform because it was clearly stated by participants and we don't want the synchronous tools, we, we want synchronous, we want to work in real time and see and discuss in that. Uh, it was especially important in the Seoul workshop. Uh, there was a huge challenge in explaining activity theory. And after a while, the discussion was clearly like, no, we cannot understand this because subject and object are not the same thing in our language. It doesn't make any sense at all. Then we were able to, to make it work. So we were able to understand each other and explain. And so then the workshop was completed. So it wasn't impossible. But yes, there was this problem that was actually was one of the first moments where I realized this importance of the worldview. Um, there were also some testing of the canvases in phase two. Uh, mainly in a course that I taught in Aldo University and some other uh, workshops. Um, but there was what was important, also, I discontinued a bit in terms also for uh, sake of time and energy, because in this canvas is very good when you need to do some work in the same place with few people and basically a way for uh, a conversation starter. Uh, Famously and famously, uh, like Stark, famous uh, orange uh, user, and as conversation style. So they're actually very good for having people in the same place to discuss. But for example, like we we discuss some common rule, like to have some certain colors or center or something, and nobody was 
following then it was so it's very good for discussion but not that that discussion is something that you can put into practice and say okay these are actually the design of the process so this is just the discussion the brainstorming of the process but it will never be able to be transformed into, into process that is actually uh, adopted um, so that's why then I move to the software dimension first with a desktop uh, application and then with the platform because of course it can scale more easily to, to participants uh, and that was tested with the with the study in a, in a maker space in a fab lab in Politecnico di Milano. So the why also say it works well with the participants that they have the same worldview from survey design interaction design, but maybe in other contexts there will be a need of and to need of the different worldviews. And um, and there there were of course several things important in the um, research study. Uh, I also studied a bit what was the, the easiness of use the platform, knowing that in any case was the first prototype that there wasn't the goal. Uh, but the results were good because they say, well, it's, yes, it's usable, but we always want to have a technical person involved in adopting the, um, the platform. And one way to see this, well, it's not completely self explanatory. Uh, and this probably could be said to manage the software, not just like that. Uh, but it was important to understand, okay, no, actually this is the role of a meta designer. Like we want to have the meta designer involved in what we are doing. So that was very important in the discussion with them uh, to understand that there is always some people, the human in the loop, what is called the machine learning that is that is relevant in that. So several different aspects were seen in each of these um, experimentation. And then of course there were more workshop and discussion. And then they, that's what they pushed the change from First, we have a conceptual uh, um, methodology or guidelines and, okay, these are good for inspiring, but then we need something more concrete. Mm -hmm. Then if you move to paper-based tools, they work just for brainstorming, then we need the software. And then when the software end, human actors also in it for uh, working together. So that was very useful in terms of uh, the overall uh, process of the research, but also thinking that it probably mirrors a lot of work in design going from the conceptual to prototype, paper-based prototype, and then to the finally working platform, which, which is completely working. This is ready for deployment, so it can be used. This is not a prototype. Yeah, so I'm thinking moving forward, uh, it, it, it's clear that, that there has been a development also in the way in which you have approached working with, um, with humans, working with people, and um, of course, in the thesis, you talk a lot also about uh, network science. We discussed it before, social network analysis, and just in general, um, uh, that are driven, that are informed um, type of research. Do, do you see it still a complementarity between this more that informed ways of gaining insights and understanding processes and the type of less less formal, harder to formalize, but still there insights that you can gain from um, engaging with with people on a more you know on a different level that's not mediated by technology in, in, in heavily. There was also another very important experience, and I would say very positive in adding data driven and quantitative approaches to understanding and how design can unfold um, because it creates a bit more of the systemic view of what is happening and it was also very useful to understand myself where am i knowing that it's not neutral so the way i create the software that analyze the networks of course you know there might be bugs there might be mistakes there might be conceptual mistakes technical mistakes so that's why i publish everything openly so it can be checked uh, but it was very important to understand also the, the role of this, which is probably not used enough uh, already, you'll say. Um, mm -hmm. This is one other important thing probably to say to contribution in general. Like if you want to work with ontologies, then we start working and understanding the structure, then also understanding the complex part of uh, the processes is very important to uh, to bridge the the local, if you want the particular with the, with the not necessarily the universal, but a bigger a scale particular to understand where is that taking place and how it interacts. And they don't necessarily um, conflict with each other, the quantitative and qualitative, the data driven and, uh, and the more human, uh, but they need to be understood and put into context, understanding these tensions. Yes. 
and probably iterated recursively, no? I suppose. Yes. Yes, for example, the analysis on Twitter have been already to three iterations yes. with different approaches yeah. and improvement. Um, you, uh, in your work, uh, talk also about issues of validation to some extent. Um, page 50, you, um, you write validation of practice and research can also be elaborated from the quality acceptance and outcomes of the artifact and 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 um and you write that specifically when you're describing uh, the the workshops and um the function of the workshops within um within your process so um this is in respect with respect to, um, I think the workshops in phase, um, in phase, uh, in the last phase, so Article 6, so these workshops also represent some of the first tests for understanding the viability of the application of open source and PGP principles, tools, and practices of the open meta design framework. Um, so that's a way in which you frame validation with respect to those particular workshops and those particular tests. And then later at page 100, you also say developing a test in an artifact is though not just it, it is not just a way for improving its effectiveness, usability, and experience, but rather for planning its development between research and practice. Um, it's the foundation for future research and practice, and therefore its validation and improvement should come from evaluating its implementation in research, professional and educational programs, and the positive impact on collaborative design processes already established or to be developed. What, so, so in this second statement, of course, you're looking a little bit more forward. And my question here is that what kind of action and impact evaluation are referring to here, concretely? What, 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 where would you like to bring open meta design next? Well, as I said, it is, there was a design hypothesis, not an hypothesis, scientific term. Let's say there is there's a design validation, not a scientific validation, meaning that it doesn't yeah. look, I didn't try to look, okay, this is real, this is true, you know, this is something, it's an explanation, yeah. but the term's relevance is important. And, you know, being a meta design, it was on two levels on the meta designers and on the agents supported by the meta designers so in terms of the workshops you know i ask you know not just the quality of the platform itself but how they could see the participants is to contribute towards you know the make a movement and not and to different extent to different aspects they they ask it uh, they reply to that uh, and then in my own terms it, i found it very useful because then i was able to uh, basically start part if not all for the contribution from evaluating the results. So it was highly relevant in that terms. Um, and for example, one other elements for this for the future is also that the whole questionnaire and the software for analyzing the questions that the research study is, is open source. So it's an open science approach. And uh, just because of course there were a lot of content so it's easier to share the data and the software but because the same questionnaire even if tweaked but can really be used for the next steps for other version of the platform, other worldviews. Um, so it, it was also, it's part of the elements, all the artifacts, the flamers, not just the platform itself, but also with the software for analyzing uh, the interactions and so on, it's part of this system of elements. So that is ready for future development. Um, and in terms of the future, uh, of course, while well, this can be applied to the three main, let's say, design communities, research, practice, and education, um, probably in the education, uh, it might be very useful, again, in terms of awareness of the designers that are you know, developing uh, themselves or that we are mm, supporting in their uh, development. So that is probably where a lot of experimentation in these terms can be done. Uh, in the practice, probably there is a, an important step forward to understand with was part of the making movements interactive that was actually doing meta design that they're doing meta design that they should be aware of that and use this um, forward. 
And in research is actually can be, can bridge a lot of research and practice working with data ontology uh, in design. So even if it was not directly in the making movement, but working with data and software and ontologies in design can be, uh, can be, can adopt this. Yeah, you, you identify some, some nice indicators in Article 6, moving from the experience of the user to their understanding of the process to the social interactions among users, all the way to the, to the practice of the users um, and the communities more in general. Um, maybe just to follow up on, on, on your answer here and, and, and to wrap it up, because honestly, I don't have many more questions uh, about this work, but... Um, what 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 do you envision then do you envision is it is it in your plans to attempt um handing out the framework to others so that it can have an impact in real world context at some point believing the work you even mentioned climate change as, as you know the communities organizing themselves around this issue or is it still still very much see it as a platform for future research moving into spaces maybe more in, in, you know, into the post-human and non-human actors and understanding a bit more how to have an impact there? Well, I would say both, meaning that it's already and over being all the software and everything online open source, it's, it's there to be taken. It's something that, to, of course, it's there when, to be used, yes. I cannot really like uh, constrain and wouldn't make any sense with this approach. And of course, for me, it's a platform for future research. I was actually good to make sense of the last 10, 15 years, making sense of everything that happened, both in research practice, social movement, personal life was very good for making sense of all of this. And there are, of course, several directions that should be um, pursued more. Um, one, for example, like in the life cycle of the project, I mainly focus on processes and the networks of interaction. And this, of course, is a very broad um, domain, but the organization and the governance have two other important domain that I started addressing, but there should be more and more work for sure. Um, the posthuman as well, especially to understanding the agency in, in this, and again, connected to the awareness of what we talk about it. And there's another element that I added is about the impact, I meaning of course here, mostly consider the, the relevance I said for, we use the platforms and, and myself, uh, but there is a very big um, part for future research about assessing the impact of designing and making activities. Uh, this is connected to the overall trends of, uh, for example, social impact assessment or assessing um, carbon footprint, uh, which is growing. And we already have tens of frameworks to adopt it and already published a couple of two or three articles about that, but it's very important. And uh, for example, even mapping the extension of the making movement, uh, I would say one question that they've been asked more than once by policy makers is how many makers there are and where they are which is a way for understanding the return of investment of research for makers, but really understanding what is the overall system is very important because it's, it's actually not clear. That, and we think we overall, we are yeah. moving from the, the general idea of making move and something potential to, okay, now we make it into practice and we really see whether the frontiers of this and limitation, what can be done and what not. Yeah, and I think there's a great potential also the work really in understanding these system and how they're expanding in terms of the different actors and, 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 and looking into, as you call it, the impact of design activities and making activities when they become more blurry, where do you define the boundaries and how do you um, understand uh, the, the type of footprint, yes, precisely of, this, of these activities. Massimo, I'm quite pleased with your answers. Are you, uh, satisfied with the questions? Yes, thank you. Very well. Um, Lily, is it your turn or is it me making my final appraisal already? Oh, I think you're still muted, Lily. Thank you. Oops, still muted. Okay, now. Thank you. Yeah, uh, this would be the time then uh, that uh, perhaps you could give us a, a, sum a summary statement of, uh, you know, your um, yes. perception. 
of the work and leisure yes um i really plot to what is an extremely rich uh work um it has been honestly fascinating to dive deep into your uh into your thesis um and to see how despite the 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 richness and the complexity of what is addressed in this work there are some very very clear um epistemological commitments and um and, and connections between the different concepts and how all of this is manifested in the in the final proposition or as i as i i really like the up on the transitional design theory um uh, expression of what the outcomes is so it is with great pleasure that i recommend to the uh, doctoral program committee that the dissertation is accepted thank you very much um I think it's now the moment if any fan present wishes to make any comment concerning the dissertation. And in that case, I would like to ask the custos for the floor. Okay, um, so then um, so we have uh, heard from uh, both uh, the uh, respondent and the opponent and uh, a great discussion. And I think it's time then to close it up. So I uh, um, now uh, uh, finalize the proceedings. Uh, thank you. Thank you.